Anita. And I'm Sinead. And today we're talking about looking after your silky sore. <laughs> properly and how to look after it. This is a beautiful product, doesn't matter which one you got, they are all equal quality, they are all amazing and you want to use them properly and you want to look after them. So we thought we'd just do this little video breaking it down for you. Yes. So breaking it down, quick, one, two, three, four, easy. <laughs> Number one is that they're a Japanese pull source, so that A, it only cuts on the pull strokes. The easiest way to remember is to start to cut up the handle, to handle, sorry, <laughs> and draw that saw close to you, and then let that saw glide straight through the cut. So start the cut right at the handle, and draw that saw towards you, and then let it glide through the cut, and draw it towards you. So when you pull that saw towards you, it cuts that branch, and when you let that saw glide straight through the cut, it clears out all those wood chips and all the sap, so you can start again. So I might move the camera and let Sinead do that again, so you can really see when she pushes that blade forward, how it doesn't cut. It's only on that drawer that the cutting happens, so yes. I'm going to move it. So, with that Sinead, did you have to push really hard, like down towards the ground, like into the teeth? No, uh, you, don't, you don't put any pressure on let gravity do the work basically so you don't want to you don't want to put too much pressure into that cut because the teeth are so sharp all it wants to do is want to sink in and it wants to just basically go through that branch so we're a guide yeah basically you're a guide so and you can see here like minimal pressure light as and it's still cutting through that branch one of the great reasons why these saws are so good for people that are maybe a bit older and don't have a lot of strength or people with arthritis because they can't yeah. put lots of pressure on anything when they're when they're cutting or even when they're doing any tasks. So to be able to use a saw that requires really no downward pressure whatsoever mm. is fantastic because it really allows those people that don't have that strength to still use the product. Exactly. So a telltale way I know when I'm like doing a garden show or something and I'm with someone and I know they're putting way too much pressure on the downward stroke is when they finish cutting. So if you've got the saw at home or any of the silkies and you go outside and you do a cut, this will tell you if you're pushing too hard. So, yeah, I'm gonna turn sideways and not cut anything because otherwise you can't see. But if when you finish your cut, your arm flies down and nearly takes out your kneecap, or you know, flies behind you and tries to hit the person watching you, you have put way too much pressure on your cut. So when you finish cutting, your hand should just do that, basically. Any more than from branch to there is too much pressure. So, let this all do the work. Minimal pressure, as Shanae said, just a tiny bit more than gravity really is all that's required, and it will be so easy, so fast, and you also, the blade will last a bit longer, because certain timbers are quite dense, so the denser the wood is, the harder it is, the more pressure and stress it's going to put on those really sharp, pointy teeth. So if you're pushing unnecessarily hard, every time that saw enters the cut, it's hitting a hard surface, it's hitting the edge. And then again, when you're pushing forward, if you're pushing down really hard, well then it's hitting the edge of the branch in the forward direction as well as on the pull direction. So you're going to make the, t the saw go blunt twice as fast as it should. So not only is it going to use energy unnecessarily, you're going to have a chance of having to replace blades far more often. So minimal pressure on that full stroke. And really on the forward, you're just relaxing, aren't you? Yeah. It's like a little tiny bit of pressure on the pull, not all the way out of the cut. Relax forward, tiny bit of pressure you get on your pull, relax forward, pressure, relax, pressure, relax. Two, avoid twisting it. So if the branch starts, it starts to hinge, uh, make sure you assist that branch, move it up, just so you can pull that um, pull that saw out of the branch. But Keep in mind, before you start doing any cutting, please be aware of the surroundings around you. Yes. When you're cutting something, it's really important to really look at your surroundings. Don't just go, oh, I want to cut this branch, sweep, cut it off, off we go. It's a long branch. So a lot of people will think, well, if I start cutting it, it's a long branch, weight's going to make it pull that way. Sweet, it's going to open up, easy to cut, no problems. 
That's not always the case. Sometimes with a long branch, it will actually drop rather than open. So you might be halfway through a cut and the tree will actually, the branch will actually pull into the cut and pinch your blade and hold it tight. So you can't actually move it anymore because it's jammed between this long branch and the tree trunk. So if it is a long branch, you're often much better off to actually cut it halfway across or even just do a halfway through cut halfway across so that that pressure is actually down at that end, not where you're cutting. And therefore you've got a much smaller chance of having that blade pinch within your cut. Oh, yeah. Mm. So you always want to be looking around the surroundings of what you're cutting and, and go, okay, what's going to happen when I start cutting it? Is it going to land on another branch and cause it to lift? Is the weight of it perhaps going to close up my cut? Do you need to do an undercut perhaps? Or do you need to shorten that branch before you fully cut it off? All those sorts of things that are important to think about before you go ahead and cut, cut branches or palm fronds because palm fronds can also jam a blade up. So very important to really think about what you're cutting before you even start your cut. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. The fourth one is let the saw do the work. So yeah. because the teeth are so sharp, minimal pressure in that cut. Mm -hmm. So if you feel that it is ripping, just lift it up a little bit and draw that saw back towards you because the teeth are so sharp, just wants to eat into that branch. Yeah, so I often say to people, it's like needles. If you push needles really hard into the wood, they're going to go in and they're not going to want to move because they're super sharp little things. So silky saw teeth are kind of like that. They are so, so sharp. So if you push really hard into them, it's just going to want to stay there and you're going to fight with that branch. So <laughs> let the saw do the work. It's just a minimal amount of pressure. Glide that saw towards yourself and then release the pressure and glide it forward again. Yes. Mm. So, when it comes to blades, mm. are they covered under warranty? How do you break a silky blade, Nina? Mm. Well, silky make the most beautiful and best handsaws in the world, but they're not indestructible. And particularly in our country, we're very good at breaking things. We yes. win prizes for it, I think. <laughs> so, yes, you can break a silky blade. And look, these saws are made to be the most beautiful to use, fast to use, but that means there's certain things about them that are going to cause them to be a little bit vulnerable sometimes. So the blades are very thin, which is great because it means you're only cutting a very thin bit of timber out of a branch, which means it's going to be really quick, it's going to feel really easy to use, but the downside of that is it's going to be a little bit easier to break than a thicker blade. So you need to think about that also when you're purchasing your saw, how thick you need that blade to be. But if you're not putting pressure on your forward stroke, then you are reducing the chances big time of ever breaking that blade. Now, to be very clear, they are not covered under warranty broken blades because the only way you can break blade is through misuse. So that means having the blade pinch in a cut, bend, twist, bend so far that it snaps, all those sorts of things, they're all misuse. The manufacturers can't be there next to you going, you really should have cut that branch a bit shorter before you cut it. You needed to undercut that branch. Um, don't wrench it from side to side. All those things you have to make those calls on. So um, your blades you need to look after because they aren't covered under warranty. But the only way you can break them is through using them the wrong way. So like we said before, make sure you only put pressure on your pull stroke. Look at what you're cutting. Try and take those precautions to prevent it from pinching. Um, and one other thing which is really interesting is Sometimes people will say, oh, look, I've used this saw the same way for, you know, a few weeks now, or a few months, and it's never broken, and then yesterday I was using it, and it snapped, and I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't bend it, I didn't twist it, it just broke. Well, what can happen with metal? Every time you bend it, you actually change the molecular structure of the metal, and it will become more brittle. So, yeah, today you might not have really bent it hard, or you may not have twisted it big time, but a few days ago, or a week ago, you might have got it stuck, and you might have ripped it from side to side, you might have twisted it a bit to get it out of the cut, that's when the damage was done, so you've weakened it basically. So the next one, two, ten times you've used it, just that little bend will be enough to weaken it a bit more, a bit more, until it will break. So sometimes you can sort of go, hang on a minute, I've mistreated this way worse than I did today, and it never broke, maybe there's something wrong with it. No, it's, it's unfortunately with metal, mistreat it once, yeah, it's not so happy. Mistreat it twice, it gets less happy and further and further and further. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind with any metal, that's, that's going to happen. So that's basically the ins and outs on how to use the saw, but now how to look after it. Because you know, this is a big investment, this is a beautiful product. We want to look after it. Yes, and that is very, very important to look after your saw. Mm -hmm. Because as, as you may know, a built-up of sap on your blade can lead to rust. 
Mm -hmm. um, Australian saps, of course, well not of course, but Australian saps are... They're of course to us because we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just assume uh, you have all of the knowledge, it's the video, it's coming your way. <laughs> But that it is very acidic, which means that it is, it's more likely to get rusty a lot quicker, basically. Yeah, well they put a protective coating on the blades, it's either chrome or nickel, but yeah, some of the Australian saps are just really, really strong in acid content, and yeah. it'll eat through that. Yeah, they're like, mm. what? What coating? Yeah, seamless, seamless, we'll just nibble through that and turn it rusty in a day or two. <laughs> so, you've got your sort. Mm -hmm. um, you also have the 100% natural Australian owned and made easy saw cleaner. It's you brilliant. Also... Oh, Sorry. It's amazing. <laughs> We've got a video on that. You can watch it. It's really good. <laughs> you also have your lanolin spray as well. How you clean it is that you get your easy spray first and you spray it all over the blade. So, depending on how much um, the sap is left on your blade, it's, it's basically how long it will take for it to soak in. And also how often you clean it. Like, yeah. you know, let's face it, it's great. In an ideal world, we would clean it every time we used it. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't always happen. You know, someone pops in, we get distracted, we get busy. <laughs> it might have been a week or two or a month. Or, oh, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, depending on how long it is. <laughs> uh, it's depending on how much sap, um, how, how long you let that. Easy, yeah. yeah, cleaning spray. Some, some saps will crystallise, yeah. some will sort of, man, it looks like they need to burn into the blade sometimes. So yeah, you might need to let it sit if it's been a while since you cleaned it last. <laughs> so we we recommend like a bristled brush. Mm -hmm. um, so With have a handle nice and far away. Like yeah, so it's far away from your hand. What you're going to mm -hmm. do is that you're going to draw that brush straight through the teeth. So that will clear out all those wood chips straight through the cheek teeth and then you do it on the other side as well straight through those teeth Whoops. and then you will get like a fibrous rag and then that you will uh, make sure you have special gloves on <laughs> yeah. pretend we're very nice <laughs> and then that you will um, wipe all the easy stuff out of the teeth mm -hmm. and across the blade when it gets stuck. One of the cool things with this cleaner as well is not only is it going to look after your sore and protect it, but it's antibacterial. So it's yeah. also going to keep that blade really clean. So you're not spreading disease from tree to tree. If you've you know, cut a tree in your yard or somebody else's that might have been a bit sick, that's all gone now because it's antibacterial. It's all oh, lovely yeah. and clean and not going to infect any other tree. And you can see here that it's nice and shiny already. Yeah. And that's what we want for all your blades basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get your lanolin and then you just Spray it through the top and on this side. Just like a quick coat over, and that will give the protection that your saw needs. And then you inhale it. Oh, try not to straight through the scabbard. So by spraying that lanolin all over the blade, coating both sides and the teeth, what you're actually doing is you're creating a protective seal over the blade. So for corrosion and rust to happen, you need oxygen. So if you prevent the oxygen from getting to the blade, you're preventing that rust and corrosion process from happening. So that's why it's so important to do that. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing, the other reason, other than it's not looking pretty when it's rusty, is um, a buildup of rust is going to slow your cutting and it's also going to increase the chance of getting your blade jammed in a cut. Because Japan go to a lot of effort and time to hollow grind those blades, which means your teeth is the biggest part of your blade, meaning you're cutting a bigger hole in that piece of wood than the blade, really minimising the chance of getting that blade jammed. Well, if you allow rust to build up, you're thickening that blade, you're making it wider, and you're filling out that hollow grinding that they did. So then the blade has a bigger chance of getting jammed, getting stuck, and the whole cutting process is nowhere near as enjoyable. And then the other problem is we've had customers that then go, oh, well, I'll just get a wire brush and give it a good old scrub and get the rust off. Well, you can do that as well, but then, one, you want to be really careful not to go near the teeth because the moment you start rubbing wire brush all over those teeth, you're going to take the edge off them. Yeah. But the other thing the wire brush is going to do is it's going to take what's left of that chrome and um, or nickel coating off the blade as well. So you're making it even easier to rust up again. So ideally, let's just clean it, spray it with that lanolin lubricant. Don't use a solvent because solvents are going to cause it to rust. So the lanolin is brilliant. It's a sheep oil. Yep. Lots of brands in Australia. I hope in other parts of the world they also have lanolin. Um, but spraying that over a clean blade does oh, such a good job of protecting it. It does. It does. Mm. We have like saws, demo saws that we use when we do trainings as well that mm. have been here for forever. Oh yeah, we've got saws that are like 20 years old and they're, they're great. Nothing yeah. wrong with them. They're brilliant. As long as you clean it. Yep. But they always say if you look after your saw, it will look after you. 
That's right. Use it properly, look after it, and it will be like a best friend in the shed. Yeah. So we're just going to put up a couple more shots of us using a few of the different saws in the Silky Ranch, because today we've used the Gontaras. Yeah. So we'll do a little close-up of us using the Zubat and a few of the others, just so you really get a good idea of, oh, you know, my saw is curved. Is it going to look the same? Is it going to sort of cut the same? So we'll do a few of those, just so you can see. Yes. Now, something else I forgot to mention is when you're using the saw, if you find that you're hitting the handle like this against the branch constantly, that's a telltale sign that you're putting pressure on your forward stroke and far too much pressure. So your handle should never be hitting the branch when you cut with it. It's all in this direction. So never having hit the branch like this. If that happens, you know, okay, hang on a minute. I've got to rework how I'm using the saw. up everything they're a Japanese pull saw or silky saws are so they only cut on that pull stroke so just a little bit of pressure coming towards you and then let that saw glide straight through the cut so the mm -hmm. easiest way to remember is start the cut at the handle and draw it towards and then draw that saw towards you uh, try to avoid twisting it in the cut if you see that it's pinching just try to help lift assist, the, the, yeah, branch. Yep. assist the branch move it just to make sure that cut is um, that saw is out of harm's way basically and look at everything around you yes yeah, surrounding yeah. surrounding is a big thing yep. um, the other thing is cleaning wise so we have the easy um, saw cleaner on our website brilliant 100% mm -hmm. natural um, and then the lanolin as well, you can just get from your local hardware. And we even have little brushes as well if you Yeah. Know. <laughs> All the supermarkets in Australia sells them, but they're great brushes. Yeah, they are. So bottom line, let the saw do the work and enjoy using your silky because they are beautiful saws to use. And if you look after them, they will be a family heirloom. And whoever gets them will be so stoked. Half-hiving themselves. Totally. Thank you for watching. We hope this has helped. Any questions, please leave us a comment or give us a call. Um, our numbers and details are all in the uh, little words underneath the video here on YouTube. We are happy to chat to anyone and we hope we haven't confused you, but you can ring us up and we'll probably do the same thing on the phone, but in more detail. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.